So if we agree that traders use different but often common methods of looking at a chart, then it, is it possible to use that information for a higher probability trade? Well, the answer is a resounding yes. So think of this. If many people are, are looking at X and then something happens at X, expect a reaction. If many people are looking at Y, expect a reaction. Now, what if X and Y meet and you get twice as many people looking at the same thing? In trading, we call it a confluence. When two or more variables are present, a confluence exists, and these areas are ripe for the picking. So think of traders who trade moving averages, such as the 20 SMA. The general trade plan is to look for pullbacks or a rally to the moving average, and then take a trade in the direction of the trend. Support and resistance traders look for price to move to their zone, hold, and then trigger them into a trade. Fibonacci remains a popular method as well, and it's generally used for clustering of levels or other confluences. Let's plot a few things on a chart and just see if anything lines up. Now, I want to keep things really rigid, and unless price pulled right into a confluence, I place an X to indicate that close is not close enough. And while price may have hit one of the variables, to keep a strict trading plan, we would require price to be in the entire zone. Pointing out the blue box, which coincides with the biggest drop, makes things interesting. Now, not shown on the chart, but price is hitting the 100 period SMA. It's also pulling in to a Fibonacci area and an area that was former support. Now, do you get in on every trade? No. And that's one of the good things about looking for a few variables to line up. And that's less trading. Now, confluence comes in many forms and there are many ways and tools that you can use to find confluence to influence your trading decisions from simple price structure to indicator usages. The list of combinations is pretty endless. This chart here shows a Keltner channel, a trend line, a 50 SMA, and a 100% projections of prior swings. To make our plays rigid, we require price to show us strength by breaking above the channel before we would be interested in a pullback trade. You could also use smaller trend line channels to indicate the strength. Number one, now we need price to almost touch our 100% projection and only after price moves outside the top of the channel. Number two, the top of the channel must be penetrated. Number three, these lines are just visual clues as to which corrective swings we're using for our projections. Number four, our 50 SMA must come into close proximity of the pullback. And five, price doesn't need to touch the trend line, but again, it must come within a reasonable distance. So to keep things fair, I've discounted areas that did not have a lineup of all of our variables. In real trading, you'd attempt to stay in the trend until you determine the current up move as potential for a deep correction or even a total trend change. So this would limit your need for trade entries as you ride the move from your initial trigger. Now what about confluence of stops? One group of people who use confluence very well are those with the big money. What they like is a confluence of obvious swing levels, range levels, and, and the group of traders who like tight stops for bigger position sizing. They like to use a confluence of traders' decisions and tendencies. Now, we've all been in a trade where price starts our direction, changes direction, taking out a low, our stop, and then continues in our direction. Even better, price exhibits a sharp move. It pulls in counter-trend traders who quickly see their position underwater, and they're forced to exit. Understand that the larger players can't simply accumulate or close their positions anytime they choose. Well, they obviously they can, but at a slippage amount that they prefer not to have. So the best place to do business for them is at areas where liquidity is added to the market. Now, one good place is where a cluster of stops will likely be. You could trigger the stops. They can accumulate or liquidate, prevent excess slippage. Another area is at levels where counter trend traders enter the market. So they push price counter to the overall bias. Bring in those looking to pick the tops and the bottoms, reverse the direction, stop them out. Now this weekly chart's overall bias is to the upside, and I use a daily chart to draw these trend lines. The daily price range near the top of the trend line formed a smaller range inside the range, and then price slammed hard. There's a strong break of the trend line, which is a sign for counter trend traders to pile on the down move. Price drops lower, the bigger players begin to accumulate at lower prices. Their buying forces the market higher, causing the counter trend traders to hit the panic button and exit, and in doing so, add liquidity to the market, which the bigger players scoop up. If you require a few factors to line up to interest you in a trade, 
you will probably be safe from the pitfalls of overtrading. And I don't think having redundancy as part of your confluence system is a good thing though. Having several trend indicators, momentum indicators, channels, trend lines, and structure is overkill. For pullback traders, having a structure point or some other tool to measure a pullback keeps you from taking those that are shallow and weak. Using a momentum indicator can show you when the rate of change in price is turning in your favor. Using a handful of tools is enough to pinpoint an area of confluence that has the potential for you to enter a trade. Breakout traders may look for a range and need to see a range form inside the range. Perhaps they'll need to see failure tests of lows or highs to validate the range and flushes in the opposing direction. Looking for a confluence will keep you out of the fear of missing out and ensure that you only take planned out trading opportunities and not be seduced by the price moves alone. As with all trading plans, the key is testing and consistency before you decide to put money on the line.